all of this is this how uh, th the history began? No. It is only in hindsight now we put things in perspective and say yeah things look like this. However, while Wiener started off with this kind of forecast and Kolmogoro started off with a different kind of forecast expression, both of them converged to this kind of a setup. You can say either Wiener or Wiener school of thought or Kolmogoro or Kolmogoro school of thought, both of them converged to the same setup that you see on the board. And then they ask the question which or what class of random processes can be expressed as this white noise passing through some kind of a filter. We will understand this filter term later on when we go through the frequency domain descriptions the term filter will become a lot more obvious. But that was a question that was asked can I bring any random process in this framework and the answer was no you cannot. You can bring a large class of stationary processes only into this framework to begin with and that to not all stationary processes there are some restrictions but by and large a lot of stationary processes come into that class which can be given this kind of a representation and that result is known in the form of the celebrated spectral factorization result but we will not go into that as the result name itself suggests we need to be uh, conversant with the notion of spectra, spectral densities and so on. So, it is bit early to talk about that result. But this preface is necessary for us to get into the world of models and remember when, when we decided to study ACF apart from thinking of it as a measure for predictability we also said we will use it uh, to figure out what kind of models are appropriate. We will look at the signature I showed you some examples right and we drew some inferences. But apart from that we could not go further but now is the time to turn to that and carry out some theoretical study. What we will do is we will study two classes of models that belong to this class here known as the moving average and the autoregressive models and ask if the model is if the process is of a moving average type then what kind of signatures does it leave behind in ACF. You know when I am a, of a particular nature I would sign in this way there is a whole the, uh, science behind handwriting right. Just based on the signature there are people experts who can actually build on the character and say this person is of this type and so on. Likewise in time series we look at the ACF signatures and try to guess what model is appropriate. But at, uh, in, in all situations you should remember this is only a mathematical abstraction. Uh, keep that in mind. Okay. Any questions? Yes. What's the reason we look at ACF signature? Is it easily available for any random process? It isn't, but it can be easily estimated. So, given one realization, you can estimate it easily. You can't. You will not be able to compute the theoretical one because you need the full ensemble. But given one realization, I can easily estimate it with fairly good degree of reliability. Right. So, that is a good question because that also begs the question why cannot I look at any other measure of dependence right and I can in fact for nonlinear processes there are a number of measures available. For linear process you do not have to turn to any other measure apart from correlation sometimes you may have to depending on whether you expect to see outliers in your data right. Then you use still ACF can be used but then you will use robust estimates. But that is one of the criteria in selecting a measure of linear or dependence whether it is linear or non-linear whether you can estimate it fairly easily. And that was also the argument for uh, based on which we discarded uh, the direction of PDFs right. We said joint PDFs are very difficult to estimate so let us not get into that let us work with moments. So, these, this is nothing but a second moment and fairly easy to estimate okay. All right. So, now <coughs> yes. So, when we are trying to perform regression on past observations are we trying to find a trend but we are also saying that the process is stationary. Yes. So, what do you mean by trend? You have to you, now you have to be care, very careful when you use certain technical terms. What do you mean by trend? So, we are trying to uh, find a relationship let us say fit a line on the previous observation and then use that line to predict what will happen in the next instant. 
No. So, okay. So, for the benefit of the students who are uh, sitting in the other hall, my TA, another TA has actually given me another p word of advice, which is that please repeat the question that the student has asked. And the question is that by fitting a regression model like this, whether we are fitting a straight line or some kind of a line and thereby violating the assumption of stationarity. And the answer is no, we are not fitting any straight line at all. We are, there is, there is no, the kind of trends that we talk about in, st, in non-stationarities are explicit functions of time. Here they are functions of, the, fun, the process is a function of itself, okay. But your point is well placed in another sense, in the sense that there is no guarantee that always this model will produce a stationary series. One, we will, when we discuss autoregressive models uh, a bit more in detail, we will talk about the constraints that one has to place on D1 and D2 so as to guarantee stationarity. But there is no connection with this and the trends that we spoke of in non-stationarities, okay. We are not fitting a straight line here. But yes, there are constraints on models. That means not all models of this type are admissible for stationary processes. There are some restrictions that we have to place on those coefficients so as to ensure that VK is stationary. But it is a bit early to talk about it. For us right now we want to ask if the process if for example, can I look at the ACF and conclude that this is a process or there is some other process that is generating and that is a question that we will now study right in, in today's and tomorrow's lecture. Any other questions? Sir? Yes. Okay. So, the question uh, that is being asked is whether E k depends on the uh, estimator that we employ, right. Now, again that, that question actually is not so well posed because uh, there is a confusion between theory and practice. At the moment we are only talking about theory, right. The only estimate, in fact this is not an estimate, it is a prediction. We are studying this theoretical case where infinite observations are available, D 1 is kind of known and so on. So, all we are saying is this E k is theoretically it should be that residual whatever is left out, if I am given infinite observations, my model should be such that theoretically the residual has white noise characteristics, okay. At the moment we are not using the estimates of this coefficient, we are not working with an estimated model. When we use model estimates then your question is valid that uh, e k will depend on the estimate. Of course, whether it has white noise characteristics or not depends on whether the model that you have fit, first of all if the structure is appropriate for that process and secondly whether the estimates have been obtained in an optimal way so as to produce a white noise series. But that is the basic premise in actually estimating a model correctly. Those are the two basic guidelines among the many that we use to figure out if we have estimated a correct model or an appropriate model, there is nothing like a correct model. When we learn how to model, once we have fit a model in the first round of iteration, we will use that. We will ask if the residual has white noise characteristics. If it does not, then that means my model structure is not correct possibly. Then I have to go and refine my model. But that is all a part of the game when I do not know the model. We are saying regardless of what the model is, ideally this is how things should be. And this now sets the benchmark or the gives us the guidelines for identifying the correct model structure. So, at this moment we are not turning to estimates at all. We are not using estimate, we are just talking about the, we are still living in a theoretical world. Of course, occasionally I am directing you to the routines in R that will allow you to estimate because you know slowly you should be familiar with the routines. The theory of estimation will come a bit later. Any other questions? Okay, so let us move on and now <coughs> look at uh, how the ACF actually looks like for uh, different processes. But before I do that, just some tidbits about white noise processes. The definition of white noise, if you look at it, does not impose or assume any distribution. It does not say that the white noise process 
should fall out of a Gaussian or a uniform or a chi-square or nothing like that. It simply says the process should be stationary and uncorrelated that is all. So, there is no imposition on the distribution therefore, one can have a Gaussian white noise, one can have a uniform white noise and so on. In practice, we work with Gaussian white noise right and uh, because that is that has some very nice properties and also the linear random processes are kind of uh, in the Gaussian white noise framework and many other reasons why you have seen the Gaussianity assumption is popular. In fact, as I said there is a process which is uh, which is a much more stronger version of white noise which is IID process. A Gaussian white noise process is in fact a, an IID process because we know that when two variables have a joint Gaussian distribution. What do we mean by Gaussian process? You should understand what we mean by Gaussian process. I pick any set of observations of the random process they should have a joint Gaussian distribution. Any I pick a pair they should fall out of a joint Gaussian. I pick 100 observations they should also fall out of a joint Gaussian. So, all the observations in fact fall should fall out of a Gaussian process and Gaussian white noise is where the variable uh, the observations are uncorrelated. The process uh, is uh, you know kind of uh, is purely uncorrelated. There is no assumption on the independence. So, uh, of course, you have a variety of random numbers that uh, generators that we work with depending on the software. They are actually pseudo random number generators you should remember that the R norm that you are using or uh, something else that you are using for random number generators R norm if you look at that routine it randomly samples the variates from a Gaussian white noise process. You can think of it that way or from a Gaussian distribution which, whichever way. The other way of remembering a white noise process is the time ordering does not matter. You can shuffle a white noise process and still have a white noise process. What we mean by shuffle is the time stamps. I can rearrange the time indices and still the white noise property is preserved. Same is not true for a correlated process obviously. You play around with the time instance you are breaking the internal correlation. Of course, you know that idea is used in bootstrapping and surrogate data analysis and so on we would not go into that right. So, as I said IID process is a stronger version of white noise process where independence is assumed and a Gaussian white noise process is IID. So, in some sense it is safe to work with a Gaussian white noise process from, from this viewpoint as well. So, the bottom line is we will always assume unless otherwise stated the white noises that we encounter that we assume are all Gaussian white noise processes unless otherwise explicitly stated.